Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, so I've been kind of lazy with uh, making videos that aren't related to the Troy along lately. Um, and not for any particular reason, aside from just that I've been reading a lot, which I don't really consider to be a bad thing since this is, this is booktube. Um, but anyway, I thought I would uh, try to get myself back into making uh, regular videos by doing a tag video. Uh, this is the Mid-Year Bookish Freakout tag, which I have not been tagged in by anyone. Um, but it's actually the tag I've been most looking forward to doing uh, ever since, basically ever since I joined Booktube. Um, I don't know, I just think the questions are really neat. Um, and so anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll get right to the questions. Uh, number one is the best book you've read so far in 2018. Uh, I'm dividing this three ways into fiction, non-fiction, and poetry. Um, so for fiction, I have uh, Les Mortes d'Artur by Sir Thomas Mallory, which I just finished uh, last week. Um, it's very long, about 800 pages. Um, and um, it's uh, Sir Thomas Mallory's collection of uh, tales about the uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Um, and it can be tedious at times. There's a lot of people going to tournaments and jousting and a lot of little side stories that don't seem all that relevant. But like with a lot of these long classics, if it is tedious at times, there's also a huge payoff um, at certain moments. And there are some great stories. Um, and it's just, it's really beautifully written too, uh, I think. Uh, it's very, it's told in this kind of pithy manner. Um, where, you know, Sir Thomas Mallory doesn't dwell on things. He kind of says what happens and then just goes and moves on. He'll say, he'll go through what might take another author pages and pages to get through in one sentence, you know? Um, which is great, um, which I love. Um, but it can also be so beautiful, um, when he does kind of, um, rest on one moment, um, on one big climactic moment. And, um, anyway, this is just a beautiful and moving book. Um, especially towards the end. So, uh, anyway, yeah, they morphed our tour. Um, for nonfiction, uh, like, like for most of the books I'm going to talk about in this tag, I actually don't have the book with me. It's, uh, Phantoms in the Brain by V.S. Ramachandran and Sandra Blakesley. It's a big collection of, uh, case studies of people with brain damage. Uh, and the way I described it when I first read it was mind-blowing, and I would definitely still hold that assessment. Uh, it just teaches you so many things you would never have thought about the brain, so to speak. Um, and it's just incredible. And it's really engagingly written. It's short, and there is not a dull moment in it. Um, it's just, it's a great read and so informative. Um, and then poetry, I have uh, a selection of poems by James Merrill um, that was edited by Langdon Hammer. Uh, and James Merrill, more than any other poet at the moment, is one I really, really want to do a deep dive into. I, at, I've been looking in every single bookstore I've gone to for his collected poems and for The Changing Light of Sandover, and I've not been able to find either of them yet. Um, I might just have to order them. Uh, but there's also a huge biography and sort of critical study of his work by Langdon Hammer, um, that I want to read. Um, and James Merrill seems like a fascinating person, and it, and that uh, feeling is reinforced by the fact that his poetry is so autobiographical. Um, basically all of it is autobiographical. And, uh, but he really takes his own life and makes it into art. Um, it's uh, really just great, and um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe James Merrill because uh, I'm loath to say that I understand everything I read by him, but there's just so much beauty in the language that um, I'm just compelled to move forward with him. So, anyway, yeah, a selection of poetry, poetry by James Merrill. Um, so, number two, uh, best sequel you've read so far in 2018? I haven't read any sequels, so I don't really have an answer. Um, number three, a new release you haven't read yet but want to. This technically isn't a new release, uh, but, but by my standards it's a new release because I rarely read new releases. But uh, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders, which I finally got a copy of when I was at a bookstore in Lake Placid. And uh, yeah, I've just heard so many things about this from so many places, from many people whose opinions I hold in very high esteem. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and then another one I want to read is uh, Less by Andrew Sean Greer, which won the Pulitzer, and which has also been uh, praised by many people whose opinions I hold in very high esteem. Um, so yeah, uh, number uh, four, 
uh, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Um, so later this year, I believe in October, there is a box set coming out of uh, some smaller works by J.R.R. Tolkien, edited by his son Christopher Tolkien. So these are individual tellings of uh, stories that are in the Silmarillion. Um, so there's Baron and Luthien, there's the Fall of Gondolin, and, and there's the Children of Hurin. And the Children of Hurin I've actually read and, and love. Um, but this box set will have that and these other two that I haven't read. And, uh, and so yeah, I'm, um, I'm hoping I will be able to uh, write a review of that for Open Letters, um, which I will look forward to greatly because Tolkien is, uh, has always been one of my literary idols, kind of. Um, and so to actually have the opportunity to write about him is uh, just thrilling to me. Um, so yeah, definitely that box set. Um, number five, biggest disappointment. Um, head, and head and shoulders below the others, I guess, <laughs> um, would be The Essential Horus, uh, translated by Burton Raffle. Um, I picked this up because I was hoping to read some old uh, Roman poets, and Horus is obviously a major one, and the translation was just kind of atrocious. Uh, the poetry was just, just completely pedestrian and boring, um, and anachronistic too. Um, just not, just not good. Um, so yeah, that was a big disappointment. I still want to read Horace once I find a good translation. Um, but yeah, that, that just left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, number six, biggest surprise. Um, for me this is, uh, The Merry Wives of Windsor by William Shakespeare. Um, uh, one of his least well-regarded plays, which I kind of thought I would read and, you know, I would like it to the extent that I like anything by Shakespeare, um, but that I wouldn't care for that much. But no, it's it's great fun. It's just, it's basically a sitcom. Basically a, an Elizabethan or a Jacobean version of a sitcom. Um, and it's and it's just so much fun. Um, I really had a great time reading it. I would totally go to see a production of it and would, I think, also enjoy every minute. Um, Number seven, a new favorite author. I was torn in this one because I found a few favorite uh, new possibly favorite authors this year, um, but I ended up going with uh, Christopher Hitchens. Um, I read his book Letters to a Young Contrarian earlier this year, and then moved on to his big collection of essays, arguably, which I read most of but not all of, and um, I'm just in awe of his intellect and how well read he is. Um, I mean, if I can be half as well read as him before I die, I think I'll be happy. Um, and he's clearly inc incredibly intelligent. I'm just holding up his memoir, Hitch 22, which I bought uh, earlier this year and which I'm hoping to read. I'm saving it uh, until later this year when I'm in school because I figure this might be a bit of an easier read. Um, so I'll read it then. Um, but yeah, Christopher Hitchens. Um, number eight, newest fictional crush. Uh, for this, I went with uh, Helen from... All is Well That Ends Well, another Shakespeare pick. Um, and uh, she's just a woman who uh, I see a lot of qualities that I would look for in a woman. Um, very headstrong, doesn't let anyone get in her way, uh, very intelligent, doesn't let anyone get in her way, least of all the men in her life. <laughs> least of all that pesky man she's in love with. Um, and uh, yeah, she's just great. She's an electric presence, I think. Um, and yeah. Um, so number nine, uh, newest favorite character. I cheated a little bit on this question. Uh, I did, I'm not going with new favorite character, but newest favorite character uh, pairing. Um, so in Lonesome Dove, Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove, um, there is Gus McRae and uh, Woodrow Call. Uh, and they're these great friends who used to serve um, as Texas Rangers um, to fight the Comanche in Texas. Um, but, uh, but by the time the novel starts, they're kind of old, their sort of glory days are behind them. Um, but they're still these great friends. Um, and you get that, but it's also just really funny how they're these such close friends, clearly, but also basically they spend their entire time bickering with each other. And it's just so funny. Um, and True to a lot of my own friendships, I think. I think that's how a lot of my friendships tend to be. I tend to bicker with my friends a lot. Um, I think more than one of my friends has been said that I bicker with them like a married, like we're a married couple, even with the men I've been friends with. Um, so uh, I just loved seeing that 
portrayed in fiction, I guess. Um, so, yeah, Gus and Call. Um, number 10, a book that made you cry or the saddest book you have read. I don't generally cry when I read books, but um, the saddest book I've read would have to be I reread uh, for the fourth or fifth, to fifth time uh, The Silmarillion earlier this year by J.R.R. Tolkien, and um, it's one of the most depressing books you'll ever read. Basically, all the major good characters die in it. Sorry for the spoilers. Um, and yeah, it's an incredibly depressing book, so uh, enough said about that. Um, number 11, a book that made you happy. Um, for this, I am going with uh, the collection of poetry, uh, Ideas of Order by Wallace Stevens. I'm just holding up his collected poetry and prose that I have here. Um, so Ideas of Order is a collection of poetry that I read by Wallace Stevens. Um, and I liked almost every poem. Um, it was kind of one of those great books where you, great books of poetry where you go and you read the first poem, you think, wow, this is great. Like, how is the rest of the collection going to top this? And you read the next one, you're like, okay, well, no, actually that one was better. And you read the third one, it's like, okay, well, no, actually that one is better. And then that kind of continues to the end. And it was just wonderful. But um, I, uh, I watched a lecture about Wallace Stevens's poetry um, by Langdon Hammer, incidentally. Um, and uh, he kind of starts the lecture with this little anecdote about someone who came to him at one point and s asked him, uh, are there, is there any such thing as a happy poet? <laughs> um, because when you start to look into the lives of poets and into their poetry often, it can, e it can be easy to um, come to the conclusion that they're all kind of these depressed, miserable people. Um, but Wallace Stevens is, is a very happy poet, um, and his poetry does make me happy in a weird way because it, his poetry is also weirdly nihilistic, um, but also sort of embracing nihilism, I guess, and um, the beauty that can be found in spite of that. Um, and it, it's great. Anyway, um, so yeah, Ideas of Order by Wallace Stevens. Uh, number 12, uh, favorite book to film adaptation you've seen this year? Um, I For this, I'm going with Amadeus, which is directed by Milos Forman, uh, the great film about uh, Antonio Salieri's uh, Deadly Vendetta against uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, um, and um, it's just an all-around excellent film. I love the way that they use Mozart's music for the soundtrack, um, and uh, I mean the acting is brilliant, the script is engaging, um, there's not a dull moment in that movie despite it being three hours long, um, and yeah, it's just awesome. I've watched it multiple times already. Um, and I've also actually gone and read a play by Peter Schaffer, who is the playwright who wrote the play that Amadeus is based on. Um, although the play I read wasn't Amadeus. Um, but yeah, definitely head and shoulders Amadeus. Um, number 13, a favorite review you've written this year? Um, I'm gonna go with my the review I wrote for Open Letters of uh, Supernatural by Clay Rutledge. Um, uh, my review was, I guess you'd say, mixed, um, but I had a lot of fun writing it, and uh, I like to think that what you have fun writing, pe people will probably have fun reading. I don't know, but um, anyway, I'll leave a link to it below, and you can check it out if you want to, but I had a lot of fun writing it, and um, I was quite proud of it, too. Um, so, uh, number 14, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year? Um, and this book I just bought yesterday, it's uh, Behave, uh, The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst by Robert Sapolsky. Um, just a really neat cover with a weirdly, weirdly designed human figure. Um, yeah, another book that's been highly recommended from, um, a few people whose, uh, opinions I hold in very high esteem. Um, it's a book about, uh, neuroscience and the endocrine system and psychology and, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm just really looking forward to it. It's huge. And, um, basically I'm hoping that this might be a meteor less pop e version of Phantoms in the Brain. I don't know, I know it's not like Phantoms in the Brain in the sense that it's not about people with brain damage, but um, I've just, after reading that, I needed to read something more about neuroscience. Um, and this seems like a good way to go, so behave. Um, <clears throat> and uh, number 15, what do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, TBRs and planning my reading never end well for me. They always, doing that always ends up making me miserable. Um, however, I do have a few buddy reads coming up. Um, 
So uh, first, next month, I'm going to be reading The Canterbury Tales with Elena McCredina. I have my lovely box uh, edition of it. This is a translation of it, but uh, um, yeah, so The Canterbury Tales. And I'm also going to be buddy reading uh, The Divine Comedy by Dante, again with Elena McCredina in October, I believe. Um, and at some point before the end of the year, uh, Wilson Shugart and I are going to be buddy reading Wuthering Heights, and I have this really nice Norton Critical Edition of Wuthering Heights, which I'm kind of pumped to read because uh, these Norton Critical Editions have like uh, essays, critical essays, and, and stuff like that, which will be really cool to read uh, for our buddy read. Um, and then I am also going to be reading a Tomb for Boris Davidovich by Danilo Kish with uh, Sean the Book Maniac. Um, this is, uh, I believe, a collection of short stories. Uh, Sean has referred to it as a novel in his emails to me and in his video, but I believe it. Uh, According to Wikipedia, it's a collection of short stories. Um, but Danilo Kish is a Serbo-Croat author um, who lived in the former Yugoslavia, and these stories all take place in um, in Eastern Europe. And uh, from what I can, I've found on Wikipedia about them is that they're all kind of fictionalized biographies of various political figures in Eastern Europe in the 20th century, um, which sounds very interesting. So uh, yeah, John and I are going to be buddy reading that. And, um, so yeah, that is all I am sort of requiring of myself to read. Um, aside from that, I'm just gonna be reading. I'm a very, uh, mood reader. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, anyway, that is the mid-year bookish free out tag. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to tag, uh, Laura Pora. So, uh, I will look forward to seeing your answers. Um, and, um, anyway, yeah. I will try to get back to making, uh, normal videos again, uh, this month. Um, but anyway, bye guys.